I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful we are and be ashamed. I too am America. Gil, in my opinion, is is one of the great, one of those great uh, black writers of the 20th century. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to tune in, turn off, or cop out. He had that capacity, like Chuck D had later on, to uh, you know reach the masses, rock the boulevard. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. As far as I was concerned, he was the lone prince of the revolution. There will be no pictures of you and Willie May pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run. He represents the elder statesman and the man on the corner at the same time. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. So was he direct? Absolutely. Was he provocative? Absolutely. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not make you five pounds thinner. He's managed to both create a legacy and, you know, still be this living, performing artist in spite of everything he's been through. This revolution is not a rerun, brothers. This revolution is live. Am I blue? Am I blue? Uh, I was born in Chicago in, in, on April Fool's Day, uh, April 1st, um, 1949. I come from a combination of a, of a black man from, from Jamaica and a black woman from, from Jackson, Tennessee. My mother and father were having problems and getting along with each other, and my mother was going to have to reorganize herself, re re relocate. She had my, my grandmother take me back to Tennessee with her. Uh, so I arrived in, in Jackson in, uh, late in 1950 and was there through 1962. My father was the first black player for Celtic, uh, pr probably the first black player in Scotland. They referred to him as the Black Arrow. He scored a goal, the first goal, the first, first game he played over there. I think that might have saved his life, ain't no telling. <laughs> Could be a spoon full of diamond. Could be a spoon full of gold. It was our grandparents that gave us the foundations in those days. Our grandparents were the people who been through it all, came from another country to this country, uh, uh, understood more than one way of living. I was a great uh, believer that, that, that my grandmother knew everything. <laughs> and my grandmother was, was, was fond of Langston Hughes. She used to, to point out his column in the weekly black paper. Gill was definitely a devotee of, of Langston Hughes's work, and particularly, you know, these short stories he wrote called the Jesse B. Simple. Jess is like a working class brother who's got all kind of issues and problems, you know, with his woman, with his job, with working, with money, you know, with his landlord, you know what I mean? They're just real slice of life stories. At that time, it was something that we, we appreciated because the, the least educated, the least respected, the least appreciated characters in those stories always came out on top. They call it stony, my dear. Just as bad. I come from the blues. I, I am a, I am a bluesologist, a bluesist, and I come from that 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 type of type of attitude. I come from Tennessee. If you're going to be brought up in the South, then you know that you got the blues right at your hip. BB King and to Bobby Blue Band and to to Lightning Hopkins and to John Lee Hooker. It lies about that. Of, of Beale Street, you know, out of which the B.B. Kings and Howlin' Wolves and all those people came out of in the 50s, was really part of kind of a, 
a separate and if not equal um, self-sufficient you know african-american community of the 50s my mother had been involved with the NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And when that organization moved into Jackson, it, it, the, 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 the primary purpose of it was to advance the educational process. One problem with Jackson, as it was with many places in, in the South, was that the schools were segregated. In 1962, along with a guy named Gillard Glover and a girl named Madeline Walker, uh, uh, I was one of the three uh, who, who integrated the school system in Jackson, Tennessee. <laughs> I was aware of the fact that, that, that some changes need to be made. I, I, I learned that on the front porch at night when my grandmother and other people would talk about what the situations were and what needed to be done, that, that there were some inequities there and we were somehow the, on the lower end of it right through there and we were trying to do something about that. I, I learned that at, at, a, at a very early age. Someone who has is, who is seen the, the effects of, uh, of, of Jim Crow and, and, and suffers the, the scars of, of Jim Crow can write about it better than someone who hasn't. Alabama's got me so upset Tennessee made me lose my rest Everybody knows about Mississippi God damn. My grandmother died uh, 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 the night John Kennedy was elected. My mother moved back to Jackson and then she made arrangements with her brother for us to move to, to, to the Bronx in New York. They were building this uh, this new project, new low-income housing project in the, uh, in the Chelsea neighborhood, which which had almost no blacks. It, it was it was a Puerto Rican and white neighborhood. I used to tell people that that, I, that my neighborhood was 85% Puerto Rican, 15% white folks, and me, because <laughs> that's how it was. I come from 17th Street, and that's on the other side of town. If you've ever heard the song 17th Street, that's probably the most accurate depiction of, of, um, of, of what it was like in Chelsea at that time. Come from 17th Street and that's where the brothers don't mess around and them, them. I'm thinking about the music and we find out you can use it, you know we're gonna get down, 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 yeah. Live, live with the sounds of salsa music with Joe Baton and and Joe Cuba and, and, and Tito Puente. In the summertime, the drums came out, and brothers would be jamming all night long. You know, a lot of people learn how to play percussion doing an apprenticeship there in the park. Live with a feeling of, 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 of young folks trying to get somewhere. Um, we were all trying to get to somewhere else, uh, out, of, out of Chelsea for the most part. Them niggas ain't playing. 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 Let us agree that the blow must be struck. And let us agree what type of blow must be struck. And at uh, whom the blow should be struck. And then those who don't go along with that strength, we can struck them first. <laughs> In the second half of the 1960s, the atmosphere in Harlem was revolution. It was about trying to create change, raising levels of consciousness. It was cool to be black and proud at that time. The word black was new. We, we had just gotten over Negro and colors, you know, and decided we could, call, we could all call ourselves black. And, 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 and agree on that. The black arts movement was the impetus for a lot of different artist groups to emerge and to uh, uh, come, come to exist, come into existence in a, in a period when we were just having a field day with our blackness. It was a time of Malcolm X, it was a time of uh, uh, Dr. King's controversial attitude about, about how